Hello, this is Paul Check, and I thought I would take a minute to share an answer to a common question I get regarding what the best sleeping position is. Uh, of recent, in the last couple of years in the United States, due to fears of sudden infant death syndrome, mothers have been being told not to let their children sleep on their stomach. Uh, this, for those that don't understand some of the complexities of how the body grows and develops, could actually be trading one problem for another problem. I will have to just share my knowledge and leave the decision up to you, and we also have issues of sleeping position relevant to adults that I would like to address. So let's have a look. I got this question from Jonathan, Jonathan Bluestein from Israel, so I'm going to answer his question and address the other ones as well. Jonathan writes, I've been sleeping on my belly since I can remember. I can't seem to fall asleep in any other position, though I've tried to do so many times before in my life. I was led to believe that sleeping on my belly may be harmful to my spine in the long term. Being a certified gym instructor and having worked in the field, I must admit I'm a bit fearful because of how my spine is hyperextended during my sleep when I'm on my belly, though it has yet to cause me any trouble so far. What should I do? Are my sleeping habits all right? And how can I change them if they are not? Jonathan. So let's have a look at some food for thought in that regard. First of all, I'd like to inform you that prone sleeping is essential for childhood development. This was identified by a famous child development specialist named Dr. Voita from the Czech Republic who did over 50 years of research on child development and there's now an entire system of physical therapy based on his research findings and techniques. Voita identified that there are pressure points or access points on everyone's body at the time we're born and throughout our life and these points serve to activate certain software programs built within the nervous system. So the same way you press a key on a computer to create a letter or a symbol, when an infant lays on their stomach, and there's key points also on their back, but primarily on the stomach, as I'll highlight in a minute, the pressure on key points turns certain software programs on that are essential for the integration of the nervous system, the musculoskeletal system, and the other biological systems. In other words, they're essential for normal growth and development of a child. For those of you interested in learning more about infant growth and development and systems integration, you might want to look at the book Wisdom of the Body Moving by Linda Hartley. What Voita showed was that these points are distributed around the body. I've listed a few for you here. You see on the cheekbone, up by the head, the front of the shoulder, you've got a wrist point, you've got one in front of the pelvis, one inside the knee, and one down by the heel, and then there's a few others on the back, but the majority of them are on the front of the body. So in my training, we were informed that it's important for children to sleep on their fronts or to sleep naturally, not to restrict them to sleeping on their fronts, but to let them sleep naturally because the time they spend prone is essential to activating these key points through the body and if those points aren't activated then the body will not be effectively integrated. These points are subconsciously controlled so it's not like there's any conscious awareness this is happening. It's just important to understand that the body is designed to move and will move and has mechanoreceptor and proprioceptor systems in it that encourage it to move. For example, if you lay in one position too long, it can put stress on the ligaments, which causes them to creep, which leads to ligament laxity, which leads to joint instability. So if a person forces themselves to sleep in any one position, they actually set themselves up for problems because it's unnatural to do that. It would be no different than if you tried to hold perfectly still while standing. I'm sure most of you know you quickly become uncomfortable for the very same reasons I've just described. So what are some solutions? Well, if prone sleeping bothers the back, try attaching a small pillow or bath towel in front of your pelvis 
to reduce lumbar curve, it usually doesn't take too much. Just a bath towel folded normally is usually ample or a very small couch pillow like you'd rest your arm on. I wouldn't go too excessive because you don't want to put the spine into flexion by over uh, supporting it in the front just enough to reduce the discomfort. You will know that you uh, may benefit from that if, for example, you try sleeping on the floor. If you have a carpeted floor or can put a couple of sleeping bags on the floor or a futon, if you sleep better on the floor and have less discomfort, it's almost always an indication you have a worn out mattress or box spring. In my years as a therapist, I've seen too many people to count that were having low back pain from sleeping on worn out beds. Another issue you can see here in my first bullet point is that a lot of the times people are getting this kind of discomfort sleeping not because they have bed problems but because they have significant muscle imbalance syndromes. If you want to learn how to address some of these muscle imbalance syndromes I'd suggest you look into my correspondence courses titled Scientific Back Training and Scientific Core Conditioning which are available from my institute website which is checkinstitute.com C-H-E-K so there's a few tips for you. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like more information, you can visit, uh, as I said earlier, checkconnect.com. I have a lot of useful information. Well, excuse me, that I said Check Institute before. You can also visit checkconnect.com, which is our social networking website with lots of uh, useful information and subscriptions and things. And you can also visit ppssuccess.com for personal, professional, and spiritual development. So I hope that's useful. I have got many questions from people on YouTube, and I will do my best to answer them as time permits. So thanks for joining. Bye-bye.